Hello everyone, and this is a quick video about the English grammar. Let's discuss some typical mistakes which you guys, maybe not you personally, but most English learners make when using different verb tenses. You probably know that the verb tenses in English, it's a tricky thing, yes? And we have a lot of questions, there are a lot of rules, and we try to explain them to you in a practical way, but still, when you start speaking, sometimes these rules just, you know, run away. And let's look at some very typical situations and hopefully next time you will be saying something like that. You will remember me and this video and you will say it correctly and it will be a big win, right? Let's have a look. For example, a very typical sentence, people like to start their sentences with yesterday when talking about in the past, yes, when talking about something finished. But I often hear, yesterday I have watched a good film, for example, taking just simple examples. Yesterday and I have don't live together in the same sentence. And this is very important to remember. It doesn't matter if you start with the time in the beginning of the sentence or you use it in the end. You always need to remember that yesterday we call it the defined time. Defined time. And in this case, have, the form with have, present perfect, they don't describe actions in the defined time. You can say, I have watched a good film without yesterday, without defining the time, just, okay, look, I have watched a very good film, okay? I will tell you about it. You are telling me about the completed action, about something relevant to the present without the date. But if you want to use that yesterday in the beginning of the sentence, you erase that have and you just need a simple past because this is what they do okay i have no time in the past i did you can say when uh -huh. when here is the key word that's why you can only say it like that Yesterday I watched a good film. Though it will be more natural to say I watched a good film yesterday to put it at the end of the sentence, but it's up to you because you choose this emotional intensity of your speaking, right? The next uh, typical problem. I have asked him and he said, for example, you are describing several actions in the past and if you have a line of events, again, present perfect can't be used here. The form with have, the present perfect, can only be one action in the sentence referring to the present, because present perfect connects the actions together. So the past, some completed action with the present. I have asked him, have you asked him, for example, I am more interested in the completeness of this action. I am more interested in the result. Have you asked him? But when you have a line of events and you tell them in the direct order, first I did that, secondly I did that, and so on and so on, you will be using just past simples. Again, mm -hmm, I will erase this have and you will say I asked him and he said the line of events you can google it if you don't remember that and we don't like to use present perfects in complex sentences present perfect is not connected to other actions because it is connected to the moment of time have you asked him yes I have what did he say you switch to the details and you start using past simple instead. He said that the meeting would be postponed. You have the connections between the actions and you will be using past simple from now on in this story. I hope it makes sense and let's go on. I am doing it the first time. This is a very typical structure. You want to say about your experience of doing something for the first time, right? 
And none of the present tenses, except for present perfect, will work here. Every time when you are describing your experiences, you need to use present perfect. Because present continuous can only, present continuous, yes, I am doing, it can only describe what you are doing right now without the connection to any previous experience. I can say I am speaking right now. I can say you are listening to me right now. But if you start telling about your experience with uh, listening or watching my videos, you will say that's the first time Time I've been listening to you because right now you are connecting as I said before you're connecting your previous experience with the moment right now whereas present continuous is only describing the moment right now without any prior experience that's why here in particular I will have to change the whole structure if you are talking about the first, second, third, doesn't matter, time of doing something about your experience, you will say it like this. This is the first time I've, I've been doing it. Okay, here it's just a set expression remember it as a set expression this is the first time this is the second time this is the third time and then you use present perfect continuous if it's unfinished action this is the first time i've been watching your video because you are telling me about the experience of yours i hope it makes sense and please look it up because this is really where many English learners get lost and make mistakes. And the next one, we have, I'm apologizing, it will not happen again. Imagine that you have done something and you're talking to somebody and you want to say sorry, you want to apologize. And in this case, you need to remember that this verb apologize, which describes what you are doing. Yeah, I mean, when you say I apologize, you are actually apologizing. These are called performative verbs in English. And these verbs are never used in present continuous in the first person. You just need to remember that. You always say I apologize and you can't change it. It only works for the first person. It only works for I, because when you are doing that, naming that, you don't describe the action, you know, from the distance. You are actually doing it by saying it. I hope it makes sense. Yeah, when you say it, you actually do that. Because when I'm saying something, I am doing something else with my mouth, right? It's just a signal I am saying I'm making the movement and I'm describing it. But when I am apologizing, this is the only thing I do. I am making this speech action. That's why the verbs like I promise, I agree, I apologize in the first person, you will always use them like that. In other persons, you can change that. For example, he was apologizing. It's possible to say, but about I, it's not. So again, if you want to go deeper with that, Google the performative verbs in English and just have a look. It's not that much, it's not difficult, but you need to know that it's advanced grammar. And the last one for the today's video. Again, we will come back to this difference between present perfect and past simple because people often make mistakes there, right? When you say, when have you found out? it's wrong again because as i told you in the first sentence when is asking about the defined time that's why the word when is the strongest marker for the past simple 
in simple sentences, right? Because he is actually asking for the defined time. When did you do that? Mm -hmm. And in this case, you can never use when with have in such a combination. That's why I will have to change this sentence into when did you find yeah, I will change it into the first uh, form. When did you find out? When did you learn about that? When did you find out? That's why you need to remember that as a grammar collocation. You always will be saying when did, when was, when were. When have shouldn't sound right to you. You need to feel it that when have in a question will be the wrong combination, the wrong collocation. If you remember it like that, you will not have to go over all the grammar rules in your head. You will have these phrases, set phrases, which you will, you will be using again and again and again in your speaking. I hope it makes sense. And if you like this video, please give us a thumb up. And I would like to remind you, if you don't know yet, that we have advanced grammar lessons online every Thursday here on this channel. That's why make sure that you are subscribed to the notifications from this channel to get a notice, okay, to get a notification when we go live and I continue telling you about the advanced English grammar. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.